Hi everybody, welcome back and good morning. Time for market moves on MT4 on the 15th of July, Friday, last uh, uh, trading day of the year. Um, of the month, I want to say, of the week, obviously, uh, in this uh, case, at least the last trading day for traditional assets, obviously, at BD Swiss, you can also trade uh, um, uh, cryptocurrencies over the weekend, that's for sure, but uh, let's have a look on what uh, happens and what moved the markets. We got the initial jobless claims yesterday, and they turned out to be slightly worse than expected. So uh, higher claims for uh, jobless, uh, from jobless people uh, did not really cause uh, much of a momentum in markets, but we can see currently, and that's the expectation uh, potentially before the weekend, that the US dollar might turn slightly weaker. We can observe at least that uh, the euro uh, common uh, currency has uh, started to gear up some sort of momentum which at the moment might sell us over sold territory we can see that here if we are looking at it from this uh, uh, from that rsi um factor here that the market might start to gear up some sort of momentum not so sure to be honest though if that's really a kind of a, of long lived motivation the question was obviously beforehand we've just uh, traded below parity about 50 pips roughly right so 99.51 is the low we can see here at uh, our chart and in this case obviously a slight uh, a slight positivity in risk sentiment uh, might be expected a slight momentum towards higher levels at least uh, is what we might see here especially after the sudden big move remember that we talked about the uh, potential um uh, kind of uh, uh, um, extension say or see from recent high to the low points here a couple of years back uh, and now extrapolating it to current times might tell us that the market might still fall somehow further obviously that's uh, something for the future potentially but uh, looking at it from the weekly point of view we've seen a big fall and obviously the question mark obviously among especially novice traders quite often is like look the market has fallen it likely is going to pop back to the upside and the question is is it really going to kind of drop him back towards higher levels or will we face uh, further negativity in markets that's at least what i would see here a kind of uh, medium term which uh, could potentially cause uh, the market motivation to be negative again um, uh, kind of in the next couple of days or weeks ahead traditionally fridays and mondays though are so-called retracement days where the markets uh, a kind of really might near um, can change the market momentum to the exact opposite side so if the week has been rather bearish we might see the markets turning back towards higher levels that's true for the euro dollar a currency pair potentially we might see that this market moves somehow higher the same is true for most other majors or major currency pairs the pound starting to see slight amount of the retracement to the upside Australian dollar also is showing some sort of uh, uh, positive sentiment but um, the question remains the same obviously is this going to be a trend change or is this just going to be a bit of a retracement a rally which uh, could tell us that the market keeps on pushing to the downside somehow further which in this case obviously is what we might expect here somehow further and which tells us that potentially further negativity in markets uh, is what we might see here over the next uh, over the next uh, couple of trading days again the uh, australian dollar slightly on a sideways pattern seemingly the same to the new zealand dollar the new kiwi actually uh, it gives us a bit of a pin bar candle so that looks slightly better even even comparing it to the Australian dollar and now assessing uh, the uh, stock markets I got a small long position here uh, from last night in the S&P 500 not a big one it's kind of at entry at the moment and we might see that uh, also before the weekend uh, some sort of a uh, slight positivity might kick back obviously the trend would uh, be intact or kind of really intensify above a certain uh, resistance area say the falling trend line above the 3900 area a bull market rally momentum might intensify the question though is also if the market really goes on towards higher levels or if the market really uh, kind of starts on pushing towards the downside Within the recent trend, that's at least uh, um, uh, just uh, the recent uh, that's the recent market motivation we can observe from that trend line point of view. 
Why the uh, S&P 500? I think it's more uh, reactive, positively more reactive, uh, uh, comparing it to the uh, NASDAQ, to the tech market. Uh, tech techies uh, have seen a huge push to the upside area in the recent, say, two and a half years, basically, since uh, COVID hit, uh, when uh, uh, basically kind of uh, the amount of uh, a very, or the, the kind of um, a, a very much liquidity push from central banks in order to finance uh, the uh, COVID crisis was uh, supporting tech companies. Everything kind of uh, happens to work online. Now we find somehow the opposite. And I just got like something similar here, looking at the uh, Grab app, Grab application to order not only uh, taxi services, but also uh, food uh, um, um, from uh, minimarts, restaurants, uh, and supermarkets. They've just come up with an offer here, which is a uh, 12 bar. That's it's one baht per month, basically 12 baht per year, which is roughly half a US dollar per year, which tells us that every or which offers us every um, every order, I think 50 or 100 orders so doing that the same time frame, time frame that every um, delivery order is being uh, uh, kind of reduced or the delivery fees are being reduced from, uh, 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 okay, say, say from $1 to like 20 euro cents. So basically we can see that uh, tech companies and grab companies are seemingly keen on uh, uh, customer retention, which seems to be the big story here as we kind of slowly and soon fade out from the COVID times. Uh, and in the end, obviously, marketing expenses are the big factor uh, here, which is why I would say the uh, NASDAQ might kind of really uh, see some sort of upside, but slightly less upside momentum comparing it to the traditional um, S&P 500, if not even also the Dow Jones index here um, of some sort. That's actually mostly what I have to say here. Let's move over to other currencies and uh, stock markets here. The uh, German DAX has not been able to gear up some sort of momentum. The German DAX has been starting to uh, start uh, to push slightly towards higher levels. The uh, 1300 area, we have our buy stop order still in place, uh, has not been triggered. So I'm not really sure if that's causing any sort of positivity still in market momentum here. Uh, in the near future. It looks to me at least uh, that the market might gear up uh, towards the higher levels there, but it's not happening uh, for now. And that's exactly why I would say I would be a bit uh, cautious and careful here assessing the uh, current market uh, momentum. Yet, of course, the order still remains, so we shall see on how this one uh, goes in the near future. Looking at the uh, precious metal space, well, there's something different to see. Here. The silver market, and uh, let's uh, observe, first of all, um, the dollar index. If you're looking at the uh, dollar currency index here, the XY, it's been pushing towards much higher levels. Uh, um, for now, the market in the recent couple of trading days have been uh, pushing towards the and beyond the 108.50 level with uh, no resistance kind of inside. So a stronger dollar obviously helps pulling uh, pulling uh, precious metals also uh, further towards uh, lower areas. We could also look into the uh, um, into the yield space here. U.S. government bonds. Uh, kept around the 3% level. Shorter term ones uh, are kind of slightly more reactive. However, not a big change in momentum here. And if we are looking at it from the volatility index, we can observe that volatility um, here, haven't looked at this for quite a while with you guys together, um, has been kind of pushed to the downside. We can see that the NASDAQ in particular last month had given us a bit of a, a push towards lower levels, but now the NASDAQ technology index might face further um, volatility ahead. So obviously kind of some sort of a risk of momentum could be of interest here in the near um, future. That's more or less everything I have to say here. Silver market doesn't look to kind of fear, uh, sorry, it doesn't look to give us any sort of supportive motivation right now. Talked about it with Andreas, who is also here in the room, yeah, um, a couple of days back. The major resistance support area is actually the area we are trading at right now, yeah. So we have a resistance point here. The market was not moving to the upside. Resistance support areas, you can, by the way, find yourself, identify yourself quite easily when moving to the line chart. Whenever you see some certain bend at around an area, it doesn't need to be perfectly precise. In this case, uh, 28 zone, right? Support here, support there resistance, resistance. That's the critical and easy way on how you draw those trend lines, so which uh, then obviously gives you some sort of guidance because those lines as markets have a memory 
support here, resistance, resistance will then later on help you should the market be reactive around those areas. So now again here, resistance line in this case here, support now we've tri driven slightly below the support area, which doesn't tell us anything bad for now, but because of the weekly chart here, we might see still that this market pops back somehow slightly higher and potentially gives us some sort of uh, positivity feedback here. However, at the moment, as I said, the silver market is not really reactive. The stronger dollar is just uh, pulling these markets to the downside. Gold, seemingly the same story, seems to kind of uh, break below the 17 area here. And then holy smokes, we might see further negative price momentum here ahead in the next uh, a couple of uh, trading days, at least, should the current trend uh, and the current market moves uh, intensify and push on somehow further. Guys, that's actually my take. So what am I doing here for now? Oil also, let me start to uh, talk about this also for a short while here. Um, the 94 area has seen the market uh, causing some negativity however yesterday we ended the daily uh, we ended the day trading with a positive pin bar so that pin bar candle might give us further insights on uh, a positive price sentiment that's at least what i would see here um, potentially happening somehow soon um, a slight positivity in trading opportunities could be also to uh, apply a buy stop 9430 that's uh, something which could be worthwhile here. Uh, stop loss, I would place it slightly at a, a close buy area here in order to get uh, some sort of positive uh, trend uh, sentiment here. And then, well, we have recent uh, lows here that would make up for interesting. Oops, I think now remove this trend line. Yep. So this would make for an interesting uh, trading opportunity, potentially actually not an overly bad uh, reward to risk ratio. Even if we kind of put the uh, stop loss slightly closer, depending on how it works, uh, we might get uh, some sort of upside potential. And even if we leave this trade on for quite a while here, we might get multiples out of this trade uh, should the market regain some momentum. Another one to kind of talk about uh, briefly is the Euro Canadian dollar. That one looks uh, quite sweet. I haven't closed this trade yet. The market uh, has given us yesterday a bit of a reversal candle. Again, doji slash pin bar. Then yesterday the market started to push higher. We've been in this uh, oversold territory from the Euro against the Canadian dollar perspective. Uh, the Canadian dollar, however, and that's the tri tricky thing here from my side, um, I've been in a long trade on the Canadian dollar. I mean, I bought Canadian dollars, I sold Eurocat um, just in expectation of this huge 1% rate increase, uh, um, which was um, a more than expected rate increase from the loonie. However, the Canadian dollar is seemingly just uh, exhausted here right now, and hence obviously upside potential could intensify. And I would say this might take us here towards higher levels in line with the general trend. Should the euro start to push slightly higher, um, then also the euro Canadian dollar could gear up momentum. So I'd leave this trade on. It's not a super big position. So let's see if this market kind of really could uh, continue uh, trading towards uh, higher levels. Guys, that's my take. That's my take for now. Before the weekend, potentially euro dollar slightly higher, highly risk trade. In this case, I would like to rather place it play it against the Canadian dollar as we do it. Um, S&P 500, a slight um, a positivity trade here. Um, if uh, uh, if I would enter the market right now, I would buy a, sorry, I would place a buy stop at around 3,810 potentially, could give us um, some sort of upside motivation. Still, it looks quite good here. And apart from this, silver, and maybe not gold so much, but silver, I look to enter the market into the upside here. Should we see any sort of relief rally here, I would like to get my hands on in this market for now. Guys, happy trading. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later. If we don't hear each other, happy weekend and uh, uh, see you back here next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.